I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. Tonight, I'm really happy to, to introduce a good friend, Russell Case, G. Russell Case. Appreciate you coming. We had your wife, Suzanne, last week. Yeah. She did a great job. And she did. Did she have any uh, comments that she wanted you to correct or <laughs> clarify? <laughs> no. no, but you got, the, you got the heart of the story right there. Yeah. That's where it begins and she's, takes off. She's a sweetie. Um, let me just say, and uh, Russ and I met a long time ago, probably four or five years ago, um, Russell's a, a well-known landscape artist in the primarily the Red Rock area and all that <laughs> stuff, but you do a lot of other landscape painting, and he's in several galleries, four or five galleries around the West. He's always being shown as shows, and those of you that might know of him uh, would appreciate the, the accomplishments that he's he's made. But we're, it's not about that tonight, So, uh, <laughs> but you can look him up, I'm sure, G. Russell Case. Anyway, you were born in the church, and... Yep, lifelong member, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Brigham City, and my both my parents were strong LDS. Yeah, um, held held a number of callings, and I grew up in it. Uh, walk into walk into the to the local ward, and yeah, that's what I uh, just you were busy. I mean, you were baptized at eight, I yep, guess. Baptized at eight. I remember I was very excited and confirmed yeah. at twelve. You know, with the the priesthood and was very excited to get out there and collect fast offerings and <laughs> as a I, deacon huh? as a, yeah i can remember i don't know that they do that so much anymore i think the, don't they i don't think they the fast offerings a, i think they kind of depends on how many youth they have i suppose oh, yeah, but I, I think a lot of people pay through the, the paper, yeah, everything's, paper everything's, process now yeah that's right computerized yeah. But, so yeah just the typical um the typical mormon um experience i think yeah. um Come, I have uh, an older sister and a younger sister and a younger brother, and you know, we were. I can remember walking to to uh, church, holding hands and talking, and coming back. And the best wow. thing about Sunday was, to me, was you know, you get home and it's dinner time, and yeah. you get to hang out and just have a quiet, quiet, quiet day of the week. And yeah, and and it did. I guess never really any questions ever came up. I mean, we just had our testimonies based on our moms and dads and families, right? Yeah, there was no, I was never considered a thinker anyway, or also, <laughs> um, there was no question to even question to me. It, it was just, you know, I watched my my father, who I looked up to more than more than life itself, you know, and my mom, of course, and people around us, and, and, and once you're once that's who you look to, I, I just, I never question. I can remember one time I asked my dad um, about polygamy. Oh, yeah. And I think it was, well, there wasn't a lot of women, uh, oh. you know, in kind of just the, the skirted excuses that, and, and I didn't, but I wasn't asking from any point of view. Or I, yeah. I'd never, I never had any reason. In fact, I can remember... Um, thinking as we would drive sometimes these little 
these little Christian churches that were scattered around, not very many of them, two or three, and I'd, I can, I'd probably ask some questions like, what do they believe, Dad? Who are they? And really? It was always, well, I never really got a, a, a good <laughs> answer other than they don't have the truth. Well, I was really impressed with Suzanne last week, just that she did d this thinking and had yeah. this relationship with Jesus. And I guess I just never gave any of that much thought. I, just I didn't either. Earl. just went through really the motions didn't. and went to church. and Yeah. Yeah. So you took seminary. Uh, did you ever get a patriarchal blessing? You know, I did get a patriarchal blessing, and I, and I did attend seminary, but by the time I was in high school, I was the, I was the biggest screw-off. The seminary, I think I, they let me in one year, <laughs> and by then they realized that I was just using it for a... Uh, hopeless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, when I did oh, show you up. using it for a uh, release time or right, something. Right, it was yeah. time to, to, to chill out and just kind of... Yeah. But, you know, I can remember going in and reading Scripture, and but it yeah. wasn't, no, it wasn't ever a big... Do you think you, you had a testimony? Well, that's what I always, I, I reflect on, and I, and I know I did, but it, I couldn't, it didn't make sense in my life, Earl, you know, because as soon as I think I was old enough to understand that, that um, this is, this is the rules, this is God, and He's given us these rules, and the more you keep the rules, the more God, you know, we're a happy family with God, and, and I couldn't keep the rules. Um, I found it easier to, you know, to clean up the outside, put on the suit, and mm. and carry the, you know, the combination. And, and I can remember just proud as can be, headed down the road to church with my combination and a suit coat my mom had bought me, and just thinking, man, I, th this is so. This is religion, huh? This is easy. But I'm as looking I, pretty good here. <laughs> <laughs> but as I got older, um, you know, and I and I knew I couldn't justify myself this what do I do with my sin you know I didn't understand um, it just didn't make sense but I really didn't question it because I didn't know anything different I didn't yeah you know so I just kept trying harder um, did you feel guilty that you were uh, your parents might remind you that you were falling yeah, short? you know I, <laughs> I can remember one day my dad says doesn't it make you you know it was after church and we were walking home and he says doesn't it make you feel good to to, to be where you were supposed to be. Mm. Just little things like that I can remember. And But but at, in the big picture, well, I, there was nothing I really questioned. It didn't, didn't bother me. I didn't think about it. Um, not even up through high school wow. until it was time to go on a mission. Yeah. Um, I can remember I, I kind of started thinking about it and wonder. But by then, some things had happened in my family, and, and we weren't very active. Even my parents at that time. Oh, and so it wasn't the forefront. Spirituality or religion wasn't wasn't. I was active as far as going to hang out with the guys in priesthood, you know, and and um, doing the activities. And yep, that yeah. I was always I was always getting a call in the fall for hey, it's time to play basketball, you know. So yeah. it was a social, yeah. a soft social yeah. thing for me that until until I got married. Okay. And <laughs> then and then you start raising your family and Yeah. Are you doing yep. art by then? Yeah, get married. Curious. Yeah, I am. I started when I was about a sophomore in high school okay. and uh, picked it up then and started started doing it quite a bit and and that was that was nice. I always had something to do at home and kind of probably kept me out of some trouble and Okay. Well, I I guess I didn't get it clarified last week with <coughs> Suzanne how long had you been married before you decided to take the temple prep classes? Let's see, we were married probably two years, year and a half. We'd, we'd gotten married in Logan, and then we'd went down to Snow College to go to school. Oh. I was going to play basketball, and I had an art scholarship, so okay. that's, where I, that's where we were headed. And that's where, within a year down there, I think we started. We, we got quite active. That's what brought me back to the, to the active church okay. is um, my wife said we're going and so I says okay and you okay, know that's honey. that's 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 the pity maybe of my story Earl is Suzanne was the one who led us spiritually who had the integrity to even um, to 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 look into these things so you know, I was just fine with like you say basketball season and yeah. getting to know the guys the fellows down there and 
just the social aspect. So we took the prep classes in, at Snow College. And you know, I, I can remember thinking, you know, this isn't a bad deal, you know, I believe this, and, and I, I like, I think that, you know, I, and, but then it was like we did it, we got to the end of it, and she says, we're not doing this. <laughs> and I was like, really? Because I kind of set my mind on it, I was ready to go. <laughs> what did she say I can't remember. Just, All I can remember is it came to an abrupt end. Okay. All of a sudden it was like, we're not going. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not remembering the conversation, yeah. but it was... But she, had you been aware of her relationship with Jesus throughout these years? Had she ever shared much about I wouldn't, the Bible not that and I really how important think, that was? And no, I, I think a lot of that came once we moved from there. We went back up to Utah State, graduated from college, and we'd moved down to Farmington. And uh, that's when her, that's when I came became aware of her kind of seeking something in depth. But to me, to me, Earl, if you said the Bible, if you said the Book of Mormon, it was all one thing. I didn't, yeah. you know, somebody said we're reading, yeah. yeah. Well, she said she went kind of through a 10-year process there, so it was oh, yeah. kind of so, seeking, and you were aware of her seeking at this point, I guess, huh? Yeah, at that, at that time, I was well aware because it abruptly ended just like the temple prep classes. Okay. She came home one day, I can remember it, that I can remember clear is we were very, we were quite active. We were on on activities committees and things like that. And um, still going to the LDS church then, raising the, the oh girls, sure no. Well, this is when we are and, yeah. fully active. The kids are going. We're there. And um, I think I had left early to to watch football. I thought, well, there's a game on. I want to catch the end of this Dallas game. So I went home before DVR. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And um, and she came through the door. And I was like, uh oh, I'm busted. <laughs> and, it, and she came through and she didn't say one thing. She just walked into the room and, you know, took the kids in and got undressed. I was going to kind of slip back to church and be there for the, <laughs> you know, for the end. And, and, but we, we lived far enough I could just walk close enough. And we didn't even talk about Earl. I knew something had happened. I didn't know if she was mad at me for not, you know, being yeah. at church. But then down the road a week or two later, maybe a month, we weren't going to church, and um, I finally we finally talked about it. She says, "Oh no, we're we're done with this. We're done with the church." So and I was that's when I I was really set on my heels a little bit. I was like, "Really?" Was this after the Relief Society? Yes, that was she well. Said. That day she came home was yeah. the Relief Society experience, okay. but she didn't tell me about that. She didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't really communicate on a big spiritual level like that, right? It was no. a it was a religion, just a surface thing. Yeah. That so did you, and, and then so within a month or so she, you do talk yeah, about so, it. So once we, she kind of told me um, that we were, I don't know if she'd really told me in her experience yet, but she just said we're done with that. And of course, on one hand it was like, what? And on the other hand, oh great, now my hunting trips and my fishing trips and things can kind of, <laughs> I don't have to come home to, to go to church and things. So. I, I just kind of went with it. I wasn't sure what was going on, and that's the the ten years that she's talking about oh, okay. her seeking. Okay. And that time, I was just I was just kind of going along for the ride, lost in my world of idolatry and sin, and I mean, you know. So it just kind of it kind of fed into to what I was I was into anyway. And you you know, were comfortable, I, and you were me. happy to just yep. I could just sit around and watch football and so what happens? <laughs> well, that's th this is the the time period of it's hard to explain. I just went along. Suzanne was the one that was looking into all these different things. I was the skeptic, of course, come to find out. I, I believed in Jesus or Joseph Smith. I believed in yeah. the Mormon Church because as this grew, we moved to Boise, we came back and we were building a house in Brigham City when most of this came to a head, where we would have pretty serious fights over over this idea of who Joseph Smith was. Oh. And I was standing up for the church, and I'd say, this is ridiculous to, you're gonna take my family, my kids, into a some religion, you know, some different take, and you're gonna split us up over this. Um, let's just go back to the Mormon church, yeah. you know, let's just, that's I mean, everybody where we lived, we lived what in a we small, know and yeah, exactly. We lived in a rural community. It was predominantly Mormon. Um, the kids had 
come home a little bit upset once in a while on the bus about playing or something, you know, something to do with they were kind of shunned a little bit. It wasn't, I don't think it was a huge issue, but it was enough for me to say, all right, I, I have a piece of this too, and this is what I think. In my family, I better figure something mm -hmm. out here, huh? Well, Su Suzanne just, you know, she just pretty much stayed stayed, uh, stayed um, focused on what she was doing. And by then, she had plugged into um, a church, a little um, local uh, Christian church there in Brigham City, yeah. and was starting to get kind of active at that. And the girls were going with her. And I, st I started feeling, you know, of course, the pride kicks in. All these people are probably thinking, um, who's your jerk husband that just sits <laughs> home every day? You know, we, we, we met this beautiful woman, this smart, you know, great gal. And, and, and really, she's got a husband that wants nothing to do with her and her kids on, on Sunday. So it really started to, to kind of fester. And, and to, to put it bluntly, Earl, our life, was circling the drain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of tension. Oh, just and not just that, Earl. But my, I had kind of a secret life, right? And um, so everything's, everything was kind of coming together. This, our my relationship with Suzanne, these secrets that I had that I, I didn't know how to deal with, our family. You know, this this vision of how it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, she's going to a church, and I really felt it slipping away. Ooh. Just, just like, okay, these things that you've always boasted of in your mind, like, oh, you're going to leave and you're going to do this. Well, guess what? It's, it's, it's becoming real. And then it got a little scary. So that's kind of when I went to church too. I thought, I'm going to go check this out. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to find, figure out what they're, what they're telling her. So you went to church with Suzanne. Yeah, I started go to church. To, to mostly prove that this is this is a you know flawed just another religion. Well, I was only there for about a year. When I was, when I um. What what do you say? You run into a wall of love and concern instead mm -hmm. of um, somebody that's gonna. S I just wanted somebody to sit across the table to argue with, and I could show show my wife that this wasn't true and we could just go home and go back to our life. Yeah. And so it opened me up, Earl, to, to something that I'd never even known. I didn't know there was a gospel inside the Bible that wasn't, that wasn't um, LDS. Isn't that shocking? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And then I was real confused. Yeah. Because so as a Mormon, the Bible is just... That's right. It's okay as far as it's, it's okay, translated correctly. But we'll <laughs> tell you what it means. Sort yeah. Of. So, again, everything is coming to a head. Yeah. My life, my business life, my family, my, my spirituality, everything is just kind of coming up. I can't make heads nor tails of it. And one day we get in a huge fight. And, um, and I've never been in such a depressed, angry, lonely, just bad place in my life. And that's when... Luckily, we had been a part of a community group in that church. And Earl had heard the gospel for about a year. Yeah. In bits and pieces, in, in, a, in a way that... The real gospel of Jesus that Christ. That I knew, yeah. yes, that God had a... That I could trust God. This idea of, well, you need to trust God with this. Yeah. That didn't make sense to me. I didn't... But at that time, Earl, I'd finally hit the bottom. I was going to disappear. I was going to just run off to Montana and, and be a... <laughs> just be a drunk and disappear, leave my family, my career, and everything. Wow. And I prayed, I says, and I was angry at God. I says, and God, if, if you are who you say you are, and this, this, this new information I've heard is who you are, you got to let me know now because I'm out of here. I'm going to throw this life away, and I'm going to disappear, and I don't care anymore. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and, and then I... A few minutes later, I said another angry prayer. I said, and if this Bible is true, and this, this gospel that I've heard, and this people, you know, these new people that we've encountered, i got to know now, too. And he let, he let me know. <laughs> <laughs> he did? Yep. Well, I stood up to walk over somewhere, and um, he, um, 
I don't know. I, I don't want to get too much into the details of the emotion because yeah. I know we all have an emotional. All I can tell you is, is I went from dead to alive. And I don't even know if it was eight seconds or 30 minutes, but um, when I left, um, <laughs> when I left the studio that day, I'd went up to my studio, you know, to plan my escape, and it was Sunday, and I couldn't get out of there. I was so furious that I couldn't go to the bank and get money. Oh my goodness! And you so were I serious, weren't you? Oh yeah, I was definitely going to yeah. do it. And um, anyway, I had uh, um, a rem remarkable conversion. I didn't even know what had happened to me, Earl. Oh, I, I, I did feel all my, my things leave, my addictions, uh, all these, um, um, anger, just everything just dropped off me. Like, I felt it physically. Wow. And uh, I was like, well, you know, who am I? I just spent the next three or four hours wandering around my studio, you know, crying and just thinking. And, and I can remember walking down my stairs to go back to life, you know, and, and thinking, oh, something dawned on me. What about the Mormon Church? And just, just as soft and loving as anything Earl I've ever felt, he just said, uh, or I didn't hear a voice, but it was just, that's, that's behind you now. It's okay. Don't worry about that. Just, just keep going forward. That was the, you know, the impression I. I received very clearly from the, wow. from the God of this universe, and I spent the next two years sitting in a chair, reading the Bible, trying to figure out who this God was. Isn't that miraculous? Mm -hmm. Did you? What did Suzanne think when you shared I, this with her? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I was in such a state of trying to figure it out for myself, or else. Um, I'm sure you know. If you would have told me before that conversion, that, that God was going to give you back your marriage. Earl, I had crossed bridges and burnt them behind me. There's th play things that I'd done in my, yeah. in my life that I had no intentions in going back. So I, that wasn't even in the cards, but if somebody would have said, well, guess what, Russ? In, t you know, in, in one week, God's going to repair your family, your life, <laughs> your marriage, in a way that you'll never understand. I would have laughed them out. I wouldn't even giving them the time for the conversation. So what do I do now? Yeah. But, but the one thing, Earl, that, that, that would hold me through now, there was a lot of mileage to cover with God that I didn't know where we were going. But there was one thing I did know, that I could trust this God who, who gave me life yeah. with anything. And that's mm -hmm. what I tried to do. I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> And, and the day that, that the confessions came was exactly two years later on Palm Sunday, the morning. And that one we won't be able to, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to get through. But. Time that's almost gone, darn it. it, it obviously a born-again experience. It, it, and and did, did, did that give you comfort to know that you could move away from Mormonism? <laughs> You'd been defending it? and it, it really did. And there was a lot of discovery. There was still questions, you know, that you have when you come across things like, well, look, the Melchizedek, it's right in the, yeah. right in there. Yeah. But then as you, you have that courage now behind me, see, it was, you know, it was nothing I did, it was God. Yeah. And so I just keep leaning on him and he just walked me through it. There's answers for all that stuff. Yeah. And I found with that, with that courage from God, with his, with his power, well, looking back on this now, and you've had a couple of years to reflect on this, I guess, but do you, I don't know exactly what to ask. Uh, do you think that Mormonism, I don't want to be too negative, but does Mormonism just doesn't provide that understanding of grace and works? And here you've probably tried to do your own thing all these years. and Well, it doesn't, Earl. There's, there's, in fact, that's my... You know the biggest difference is it's they they believe in grace, saving grace after all you can do. Right. There was nothing I could do, Earl. There was no one in that room that day that that I received the 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 power of God, when He cleansed me and gave me His Spirit. There was no priesthood holder. There was no yeah. anything like that between you and God. All I did was was you know I don't think I did anything. God did it. Well, one thing that struck me coming out was the phrase that we cannot put God in our debt. 
that he doesn't owe us anything. But I know in the Mormonism they use the phrase that uh, you're bound when you do what I say, and when you don't do what I say you don't have a promise, mm -hmm. you have no promise. Um, so you understand, <laughs> or you un certainly understood grace that day. Yes, I did, and it's completely something that I cannot earn. Yeah. God did it, and it's finished work. Yeah. And a freedom? Do you feel a freedom? That For the first time in my life, I'd, I'd experienced what it was like to, to have a true freedom to yeah. live and to, to give and to receive and just, you know, what, what does a blind man feel like when he's 50 and he opens his eyes for the first time? Wow. And, but it's an internal thing. It's a spiritual yeah. awakening to, to reality. And that's the beautiful thing is it is real. And now I don't, I don't duck things. I, all I want is the truth, you know? Yeah. I'll bet Suzanne was thrilled. Uh, yeah, it was, it was quite an awakening for our whole family. Yeah. Um, and the marriage? Is and the marriage. Um, never experienced a real marriage sealed in Christ. I've never, I've never, I'd never, you know, I didn't experience any of that stuff. It was just the first time, just like a couple of kids again, um, falling in love for the first time. First thing I wanted to do was have a, another marriage ceremony. I renewed our vows. Oh my. Um, of course, that was God who yeah. told me to, <laughs> said this is what we're doing. And so. Uh, well, just a minute or so left for us. What, what would you say to the Latter-day Saints, these people that are well, still struggling with their works? I would, I would say to somebody, if, if they really do honestly have the questions, to just trust God. It's, that's what it says in the Bible, you know, trust God and trust Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just to know that you don't have to be, um, that there is a place that you're going to, when that religion does end, that crumbles, you fall on something that's real. If you will look, and if you will take the, take, take the um, initiative to just, just test some of those questions, because I think they all do, all the ones I've talked to, they really have these questions. But just to, just to follow them out, find out if, yeah. if, if what that Bible says Don't be says afraid to research and to study. And yep. Well, I sure appreciate you coming. I appreciate our friendship and uh, what uh, a great example you are and, uh, and that you've been able to find Christ in your life. That's just an awesome, awesome transition. Praise God. Just, yeah, Earl, praise praise God. God. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Mm -hmm. Good night.